Hi, Eric Gibault, EricGibault.com, and today we're going to speak about something really serious, really sad. Photography has cancer. Let's start. First of all, uh, although the title says cancer, I don't want to play or make fun of that word because this is a really serious illness. Uh, maybe you or people close to you have that uh, disease or had it. My mother had cancer, she uh, recovered, uh, luckily. And uh, if this is your case or close friends or family have this, uh, keep fighting. People can get out of it. My mother survived and uh, she's perfect now. That was 20 years ago or more, 25 years ago. And uh, don't stop fighting, okay? But I use this word because um, this describes the situation. Uh, photography is eating up itself. Why? Because of fanboys. What are the fanboys? Well, fanatics, boys, they may be girls, but fanatics, that uh, defend uh, things that uh, are normally brands uh, that may be like format as I spoke about full frame but here I'm going to speak about brands camera, camera brands, gear brands and actually uh, I've got nothing against people who like a brand more than another brand I prefer Nikon, I prefer Canon, I prefer Sony, I prefer Olympus, whatever for whatever reason the problem is when they speak about it in a way that they disrespect people who are not using these brands. So this has always existed. When it was uh, uh, the time of uh, analog photography, I remember Hasselblad and Leica users, very often they looked over people who use other brands like they were less photographer. And that was a stupid attitude because uh, the same as I'm going to tell now about digital photography, there are many reasons not to decide a brand is better or not. And then we moved on from analog to digital photography. And then people that were still doing analog photography were really looking in a disrespectful at digital photographers, like this is not photography, this is like making picture with a computer, this is nonsense, and this. And time passed, years after years, there were less and less people doing analog photography and uh, these people were criticizing uh, digital photography. They ended up buying a digital camera. They thought it was uh, more practical maybe, or uh, they could get the picture straight away. They are less, if there was a mistake, they would see it straight away and repeat the picture or whatever. And then they started to change the way uh, of speaking. And now they're still analog photographers. I still do analog photography. But the attitude is, is, is very different. It's like there are digital photographers, analog photographers, and people who do both. They, they all agree that this, uh, whether it's analog or digital, this is a valid way of making uh, photography. So now they don't, they don't criticize that much. There are still some fanatics, but not, not that much. But in the meantime, as digital photography was growing, there were new fanboys. I'm not going, I don't want to offend anyone, obviously. Uh, I'm speaking about people who are really fanatic and they insult and unrespect other people. Obviously, not everyone is like this. This is just a minority. But this minority is the cancer that is killing photography ambience. Uh, the good way of feeling nice, speaking about photography to others and sharing ideas and things like this. I spoke about sharing uh, photography in another video. I leave, leave it to you here. So they are killing this ambience. So I remember it was a time like Nikon user was like, were like this. Some Nikon user, they were looking at people using Canon as if they were shit. And people using other brands, well, you know, Nikon is the best and the rest is shit and whatever. And uh, they're looking at you like if you were less photographer just because you were not using Nikon. And then Canon users, many were doing sport photography. Why? Because Canon really invested a lot of money on marketing about sport photography. They sponsored many uh, international photographers at uh, uh, Olympics games, at World Championships and things like this. So uh, many Canon users were there in, on the stadium 
and many people thought that Canon was the universal solution for sport photography. So these people started to grow their ego and look over people using non-Canon cameras. And then Leica, Leica, digital Leica, the M8, the first uh, digital uh, Leica. And it was seriously a bad camera. There, there were color shift. Uh, uh, the ISO was uh, from 640 ISO. You had a lot of noise. For me, they were not good cameras. Not, not for the price I was paying. I mean, if it had cost half the price, it was great because you could uh, use Leica lens that were really good. But really, for the price, they were no good. And when I was telling that, they were shooting at me. You know, like, you're crazy. How can you tell that about Leica? This is the best. Blah, 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 like this. And then there was a brand at that time that was starting. That was Sony. And uh, Sony started in slow way and then they realized that people had a bad image about Sony as a photography uh, maker because for many people of my age and even younger Sony is a Walkman that you can listen to music or, or, or a Discman to listen to CDs and uh, how can Sony now make cameras what do they know about photography and uh, actually Sony realized that and uh, they bought they did two things they bought Minolta so uh, Minolta was a brand that had been a long time, forever in the in the di analog world. They started some digital camera, and then Sony bought them. So for a while, it was called uh, Sony Minolta, and then it became just Sony. But still, uh, Sony was not seen as a, a photographic uh, company. So they started to use Carl Zeiss uh, lenses, which is the German uh, lens maker, and. Uh, that was good for the image. The same thing as Panasonic uh, made a partnership with Leica. So this is a way of saying, I'm from the electronic world, but I know how to make uh, lenses. So this way, uh, they start to build. Sony also made video recorder, but it was like uh, more camcorders. They were not uh, really photography uh, oriented. But, so let's, back, let's go back to this. So Sony started to get better and better and actually they started to sell their uh, technology to other companies, the sensors, components, all this. But the problem is that as Sony was going up, the ego of uh, some uh, Sony users started to go up also. And now we can read in, on, on Facebook groups or in uh, forums uh, sent sentences like Sony is the best and uh, even if you don't uh, accept it, this is what it is. It is the best. People saying things like this but in the way that not just because they're in love with the brand which is acceptable and understandable. No, they say it in a way that you're a shit photographer because you're not using Sony. And I think, I say, come on, you've been a victim of this attitude by Nikon and Canon users. I leave out Pentax because Pentax are great cameras, but it's very hard to find them nowadays because they're not distributed everywhere in the world. So uh, they, they, they don't bother anyone. Uh, even some people don't even know what Pentax is, which is a bit a pity. But the attitude uh, of Sony now, of some Sony user, is the same as uh, what they were victim of by uh, Nikon and Canon users. And then when you speak to many Sony users with the profile of a Sony user with that attitude is very often the guy between 15 and 25 years old who has never done analog photography and has never used anything else than a Sony camera. So they actually speak bad about other brands without knowing them. They have not tried them. They, they don't even know. So when you ask them, so what's so good about your camera? They always say the same thing. They have the best high ISO. And then I start thinking. And then I speak. Normally I speak before thinking, but sometimes I think before. I say, come on. A real photographer knows that the best picture are the picture where you have the right light. And telling the high ISO is the best feature of a camera is the same thing as telling the best feature of this car is the spare wheel. Because the spare tire, the spare wheel, because really you should not uh, 
bring up your ISO unless you need it. You should always try first to get the right light and then if it's not possible then you bring your ISO up because a high ISO picture is flat, is not as not modeling, it's not it's not nice, it's not no shaping on it. So you need to bring your own light. When you have a flat tire, you get your spare tire out. And when you have no way to bring your own light, you get your ISO up. That's the way it works. But these people, they all center everything around the ISO. The first thing they should think, what is the best camera? Very often we say the best camera is the one you have because this is the one you know and that's probably true so you cannot leave just uh, the appreciation of what's best to one criteria which is the high ISO there are many things but what's really is the best is not the camera is not the photographer the best is the team camera photographer and that team depends on what you want to do what's the best camera for me is probably not the best camera for you because it depends on what you want to do because there are many 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 criteria a lot more than just the ISO for example the ergonomy how does it fit in my hand what's the weight is it heavy is it big is it small is it steady many things uh, is it easy to use are the menus do I access quickly any feature with a button the feature I need or any feature the build is it the construction is good is it solid if it falls on the floor will it break if I turn 20,000 times this screen will it break uh, what's about uh, lens availability uh, if I want to do macro and that brand has no macro are the other brand that can give me a macro lens for this camera if not this brand is no good for me or this camera model is not good for me uh, if I want to do uh, night photography what's better for this if I do sport photography is the burst rate of this camera enough lenses I said you need to have enough lenses available for what you need but maybe you need a fisheye if they're not fisheye available that camera is not good for you or that brand is not good for you accessories flash trigger uh, external flashes all this are they available are the alternative brand I'll leave you a link to alternative uh, lens brand anyway the life expectancy of this camera will it live five years two years six months 20 years uh, how, will it break will it uh, still look nice then you have the technical side of it the repairs uh, if it falls can they repair it how much does it cost uh, are the spare very expensive if it's in guarantee uh, will they repair um, soon fast whatever if it breaks and it's not anymore in any longer in guarantee uh, will they still repair it or have spare or can I will uh, will I be able to find some batteries sometimes it's very hard to know that uh, b before when buying it's just after years of using you know how a brand mm, uh, behaves compared to another brand so it's important to take this into account what's about the resale value uh, if we was I was speaking about Pentax before there are not many people wanting Pentax it's probably hard to resell and Leica that put their price up every year even if it's the same camera well they're likely not to drop too much in price at least the lenses so they are example the guarantee if it's six months one year two years can I extend the guarantee what does it cover any country any place just my country any situation all this uh, the, we, very often people speak about uh, that uh, Canon as the best colors and I say I use Canon that don't have the best colors because I speak I work in row so if someone tells that obviously it takes the row as it comes out of the camera fine tunes the exposure but not the, the not the colors otherwise you would have no problem so it works as if it was a JPEG at color level so if you work like this well choose the right color or learn how to uh, uh, um, fine tune a raw file or if you actually work just in JPEG obviously you need the JPEG color that most suits uh, what you want uh, natural uh, or saturated or whatever doesn't matter there's nothing wrong there just decide what you like so there are all these criteria that helps you decide what is the best camera for you and this is why this 
fanboys actually are real cancer because they create a bad attitude uh, they create uh, dialectic wars and stupid arguments and this is really uh, stupid that that kills photography and don't forget one thing if there was one best camera one best brand do you honestly think that professional photographer would not buy that brand they live off photography they need to earn money with their camera obviously they would buy the best camera and if someone can pay for Nikon D5 or a Canon 1DX Mark II or a Sony Alpha 9, obviously they can pay for any of these three or other. I don't speak this one of the best, but I speak just for example. No? Why don't you think they don't buy all the same camera? Because they take into account many things. The price, uh, the durability, what they've heard, what they want to do, uh, if it's... All these criteria they look at them and then they decide and don't forget that the best camera today for you is maybe not the best camera for you tomorrow because thing changes maybe you want to do all the style of photography or the camera you had well limited you in some ways so the most important thing is not to have the best camera because first it doesn't exist but even if it existed the most important is not to have the best camera the most important thing is that you become the best photographer. If your best camera breaks down, then maybe you don't have money to buy the same camera. Or you are at a wedding and you get your second body and it's not the same camera and you still have to do the work. So you do need to be the main part of this uh, pair of camera, of this team, camera a photographer you need to be the best part so this is why the only thing that should worry you is that you would better you take your technique you would better your knowledge you would better everything because you cannot depend on a camera you must depend on yourself and be able to do great pictures with any camera with some camera it would be easier and with some camera it would be harder but you must be able to deliver the photography you've promised especially if you're a professional and if you're an amateur also deliver it to yourself or to your friends or family so please fanboys relax stop insulting people just because they think different about the camera uh, I think brands are, and cameras are just tools and they are no best camera they are best camera for you and you probably if you're a good photographer you have many best options so that's it please if you like this video share it on your uh, social network there's a small button for subscribing to my youtube channel a small bell if you click on it you'll get notified uh, when i upload a new video my website erichibo.com if you have any question you can leave a comment below or send me an email to info at erichibo.com i also put links of my gear on amazon in the description and links to other parts of my youtube channel thank you very much bye